Hi everyone, welcome to part one of a three-part series. This is named Pasture Creek. And I'm working on a 16 by 20. You don't have to go that large. And I'm uh, using oils on canvas. The uh, first part of this painting is block in and we figure out first where our shapes are going to be. And then we put in value colors. Don't make this complicated, but basically it kind of looks like an abstract painting right now. And that's where we're supposed to be, I think, at this part of the painting. We also put the paints in thin, and uh, if you put it on too thick, just scrape it off or, you know, wipe it off with a paper towel. No big deal. The important thing I want to stress to you on this part of the painting is don't get complicated. Try to get your best shot at what the value is and put it in thin. We'll work on top of it. All right, what we're trying to do is get something to compare. Is this too dark, too light when the colors are, uh, and values are next to each other? That's what we're trying to do. And uh, so just make your best shot. We'll perfect it as we go. Okay, what else? Get outside and paint, get critiques, and uh, join other people like-minded people like yourself and join a paint group and paint every week. Purpose of this is to provide you good instruction every week. Hope you can do one of these paintings every week. All right, that's what I'm trying to do with you. Thanks very much. I've said enough. Let's get to painting. All right, bye-bye. Good morning again. I'm George Call here in Loveland, Colorado starting a new series of three, a uh, series of three for our painting that we're going to name Pasture Creek. So this was a Wyoming uh, painting or a, a reference that I have and um, I've never painted it before so this is going to be a real adventure. So as you can see from my palette it looks a little different than previous ones. I got some paint stripper and uh, put it on there and cleaned it up so you can see what I've got going here. And um, we have a clean palette finally. I did that for two reasons. One, it was really getting to be a mess. And number two, uh, you can see my mixtures easier um, and what I'm pulling from the, the pile. So I'm going to make a resolution that yes, I'm I'm going to try to keep my palette more clean than I have before in the past. So uh, we'll see how long that lasts. Well, um, I want to just go over my, my basic colors. Uh, one is ultramarine blue, permanent red medium, lemon yellow, Naples yellow, cold gray, uh, raw sienna, which is um, my, one of my newer colors I'm trying out with and Viridian. I also have my Titanium White in my lower right. So with that, um, that's what I'm going to start with. Um, let me do a little organization here and start with this first part of the painting. Part one is block in, and what we're going to do today is figure out where our shapes are going to be and then fill in those shapes with a value color. So try not to make this too complicated. We're going to try to do that in the next 30 minutes. You can start and stop the uh, YouTube or Uscreen at any time and uh, stay up with me. So I think I've got Anthony with me today on uh, Zoom and welcome Anthony. So, okay. So, let's make a drawing color. I'm just going to use a common one I use. Ultra Blue, Raw Sienna. Raw Sienna. There's a lot of different colors you can use. This is kind of just a kind of a warm, cool. It just makes a beautiful Dull green. It's just lovely. Gray greens, dull greens, they're very useful in this painting. 
I think the struggle that I'm going to have with this painting, and you may have also, is, I mean, if you look at the reference, and you can find this reference on georgecallgreatart.com under references, there's a heck of a lot of green in this thing. But I think once you download it and look at it closely, we could put some silver greens in there, some gray greens, and all kinds of brights in the bright areas. I guess I, I'm using a number two or four, number two flat. And I'm going to um, first figure out where these mountains are going to be, and I'm going to put them up here. I'm a little bit more of a rectangle. This is more oblong in my reference. So I'm going to bring it down a little bit. Then there's another line of uh, bushes underneath that. It's right here. And I'm putting that in. Alrighty. I also see kind of a, an angled line here uh, where the creek bed is. This is the upper bushes. So this is bushes, bushes, and then the angle bank, I'm sorry, the bank and creek kind of angles down this way, and then kind of comes out here with the dark, and kind of goes back this way a little bit. Then there's a, right here is a, area that Where the bushes come in right here, down, down, and down. And then there's a big dark in here. Bank goes back like this. And then you lose the, the stream back in here. So this is going to be bushes in here. This is going to be stream and rocks in here. A lot of rocks in this thing. Next I want to, for shapes, I want to try to figure out where these hills are going to be. I'm going to make them a little bigger than what the reference has. And there they are. So I'm making them a little taller. The distance from here to here is going to be taller than what I have in the reference. Again, it's because I have more of a rectangle, more of a square than a rectangle. I'm working on a 16 by 20, and that's the reason for that decision. All right, I'm going to move my drawing color over to the left. And I'm going to get ready for my next mixture. If you haven't been with me before, I'm working on a glass palette. The reason for that is it's very easy to clean up with a razor blade. And I'm going to start on my next mixture. So I'm going to go ultra marine. A little bit of red. Ultra red. Raw sienna. Raw sienna. Raw sienna. Raw sienna. And I'm going to throw in a little bit of Naples yellow. It gives it more of a green tint. Let's go back on that mixture. Ultra, blue, red, raw sienna, lemon yellow. Beautiful, subtle green, dark. And I want to put that in where the darks are going to be. So let me get a bigger brush. And here we go. So I think at the base of these bushes we're going to have some darks. This is the base of these bushes right here on the upper part of the painting, the upper half. And then over here there's some darks. And at the base of these bushes are going to be some darks. And 
And it's, I might as well just put some darks in here too. That's the reflective light down in this area. I need more ultra blue. I need more red, raw sienna, and lemon. I see a big dark over in here. There's another dark up in here. I'm going to just put a very light side stroke. You see the side, the angle of my brush? Just trying to get some dark area here where we are in shadow. So anywhere where there's shadow, I'm just doing a side stroke. It's probably not a good way to deal with your brush, you dull your brush, but I am not known to be nice to brushes for some reason. And all righty. Oh, lost my image. Excuse me. I have to go back to my laptop. Bring it back up. I'm going to add some uh, ultra to this mixture. Ultra blue. A little bit of Naples. A little bit of Naples. And some white. I think that will be perfect for in here. A little bit more white. And this is the reflective color of the sky in the water. What I'm going to do, I think, before I get too far into that, I'm going to get some more dark made. I need to figure out where those stones are going to be. Ultra blue, red, ultra blue, red. And wherever you see stones, I'm putting in the dark. It's kind of a more of a purple. And I see this shadow coming out here more. Okay, let's get back to that lighter reflective color to the blue. So what I just did was figure out where my stone shapes are going to be. And this is the area. Now the blocking stage is putting in with thin paint. There's a lot of turp in it. Going back to my blue. And I'm putting that into where the reflective colors are. I think there's a dark coming down here. I better make. I just um, scraped that out with a paper towel because I want to get some of that purple down in here because I wasn't paying attention to what I was doing. So what we're doing is making a nice abstract painting right now with all these interesting colors. So that's why abstract painters and somewhat realistic painters have a lot in common. We work on top of abstract colors. I'm going to add more white to this mixture. To the, what I mean by this mixture is the blue mixture. I think we're being joined by Ann on Zoom. Welcome, Ann. If you can hear me. Okay, so up here, I'm just putting in one color 
which is a ultra blue and white basically up here. work on this for a second. Here we go. And I'm just covering the whole area that's going to be mountains with this ultra blue and white basically. So you can see the value of this mountain is much lighter than the reflection. And that's the important thing. And again, I want it to be thin, so I'm just going to pick up with my paper towel and keep things thin. All right. I'm going to move over to green. Let's do that next. Picking up my thin colors I have down. I have a little bit left over, not much, and I'm putting that off to the side. Coming back with my razor blade knife and going back to my mixing area to make a big mixing area because that's important is to have nice mixing areas. That's why I try to steer the students away from these things with where they use paper and they it's hard to keep your paper and clear it off that everybody's saving these little piles of paint. When you're working on glass, you can come back and just pick up this stuff and have a big mixing area, which is really a big deal in our business. Okay, let's move into green. So, let's get the palette knife, ultra blue, lemon yellow, lemon yellow, Naples, and a little white. I may have made that too light. I need some darker green. So let's do that off to the side. More blue. A little bit of lemon yellow. So I have two basic greens here. I have a dark light. And then next we'll make a really light one, which is just going to be Naples and yellow. Naples. I had too much contamination in my palette knife. And I hope I can get a light enough color out of that. So I have light, medium, dark. And I'll pick up just about everything I got left in there. All right. So let's start with the big brush. I've got a number 10 flat. And I'm going to thin down my lightest color. And I think I'm going to put some of that up on top. And I think we have some of that over here. So I have to scrape out some that I have here. And there's some strong lights here and some over here and down here also and then on the bottom I see a pretty good swath of it let's um, add a little bit more blue to this medium green white white so we kind of have a silvery green. I added ultra blue to the medium green and some white. And you see up here there's some silvery green on top of these bushes. And I see some of that here too.
and here. And I see some on the area that comes out in this area. I'm going to put the bank in next, which is this area right here. So I'm going to the darker mixture. You can see I'm mixing a little medium into it just by moving it over to one side and to, on my palette knife. And this is going to be my bank. Now as it goes back it gets smaller and here it gets larger and it's largest on this side. And I think I'll just slap a little down here too. I'm going to go back to some blue and white, making some silver green, blue, white, and with the contamination in my brush, you can see I'm making a silver green. All right, let's try to meld some of these colors together. Oh, I need something down here. I've got bright coming through. I'll use some of this stuff I used on the bank right here, down here. How am I doing on time? Oh, we're doing good. All right, so now let's move up to the sky. I'm going to pick up all these colors, put it into one. Clean the mixing area again. And this time try to get some of the contamination out of my number 10 brush. If you can't, Get a fresh brush. And I'll see if I can do that. And I did. You can see I have a number eight, I guess, in my hand. So I want to go up to the sky and get some ultra blue. I'm just about used up my ultra blue, so I have to squeeze some more out. And I'm going to get some find a new product. I don't know how this is going to look or not. Manganese Blue Hue by Gamblin. Nice looking stuff. Try that with white. It's a beautiful sky color. And I have a little green in there. I'm going to have to squeeze out some white also. All right, so standing back, it's kind of interesting to look at these different greens and silvery greens, yellow greens, and they're real dark. It's kind of a nice abstract shape. I'm going to meld those colors together as soon as I finish the sky, what I mean by meld together is uh, soften the edges, not have such abrupt changes. I'll show you what that means in a minute. Again, we're not trying to overdo this thing too much. I'm going to use just a little bit of, I'm not using a lot of thick paint. This is thin stuff. This is the part of the painting we go thin. And the reason I'm using white is I just, so many artists have too dark a sky. When I look at the skies, it's light, so 
If you make it too dark, don't worry, we'll work over this again before the end of the painting. So I'm not choosing to put in any clouds on this one. And that's the manganese uh, blue that we have. It's a nice product. Manganese Blue Hue by Gamblin. All right, here we go. And the value is just a little dark, but I think I can work on that in the future. And again, I'm getting some turp on my brush. I want to put this in thin, and I want to have kind of a dip in a few places, like right here. I just don't want a straight line for mountains. And if you put it on too thick, just get your paper towel and run it over like that. Again, we want to keep it thin. You see, well, George just screwed up that line, but I'm going to work those mountains over. Don't worry about it. Now, let's go back to that previous brush we had and uh, soften these edges. So I'm cleaning this number 10, squeezing it after I put it in the turp, and drying it. It's not dry, but it's, I'm getting some darks. So I'm going back in the dark pile and What I'm doing is softening the edges just by running back and forth with the darks. I think I'm losing my good darks, so I'll see what I can do about getting some back in. I'm using some blue, red, viridian. There it is, it's coming back. I think one of these is like coming down to the Put an angle on it as it's coming down to the, kind of shows the slope a little bit of the bank. I completely lost my dark over on this side, and I'm putting that back in now. Again, I'm using ultra blue, red, viridian. And this is being softened. I'm melting these two together by using the size of my brush. If I see white canvas sneaking through, I, I cover it up. And this dark is a little too, it's a little too stingy. Let me see if I can make a darker mixture here. Red green, red, green, a little bit of blue. I'm going to throw some gray in there. It's cold gray. So if you've lost some of your darks, you can put them back like I'm doing right now. And reestablishing them. Again, where you see your white canvas coming through, just give it a little scrub, and that softens your edges. And I see some here and there, and I'm covering up my white just by using the scrub technique. And if you can't get your dark back, Consider doing this process. Let me get some more ultra blue. Ultra blue. Mm -mm -mm. Hard to squeeze out. Ultra blue. Red. Viridian. 
just pick up your knife and smack it on there. And the reason I'm using my knife instead of my brush is because I'm working over wet paint. And that's a technique to reestablish your darks over wet paint. And I'll see if that will help up in here too. Just a few places. I think that's doing the trick. And that brings us to the end of today's session. Session one, block in, where we figured out where our shapes were going to be. And then we blocked in with a basic value color. And I think that's what we can successfully say we've done. All right, I'll come back tomorrow and we will start on balance. Balance day, we'll be saying, is this too dark? Is this too light? Are my gray greens working out? Do I need to make them more silvery? That's what we're going to do tomorrow. But today, we have kind of like an abstract painting where we have our value colors in our shapes. And that is the purpose of today. So, with that, I'm going to say thank you so much for coming by for session one of uh, Pasture Creek. All right. With that, we'll bring this one to a close. All right. Bye-bye.